How to install Jenkins on Debian 12. Here's today's starting point. I have a fresh installation of Debian 12. I've gone ahead, logged in, became root, I did an apt update and an apt upgrade. I also made one other change. I set my editor to Vim. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to install Java on this machine. Now I've chosen to install the Timurin distribution of Java. So I've pulled up the documentation for that. There's also a link to a gist down in the description that has all of the commands that we're going to be running. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to, need to do an apt install, install wget, and the apt transport HTTPS. Now also, I found that I needed to go ahead and install curl at the same time. So we're just going to go ahead and install all three, wget, curl, and apt transport HTTPS. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the steps we need to follow. We're going to need to download the key, set up a repository, we'll do an update, and then finally we'll do our apt install of Timurin 17 JDK. So let's go ahead and copy these commands here. We'll paste that in. So now we have our key. Let's go ahead and get the information to create our repository. We'll paste that in. That's creating our repository to do the installation. We'll do an apt update. Now, as we do the apt update, what we'll see here is we now see entries for packages.adoptium.net. So that tells me we're good to go for installing our version of Timurin that we want. Then finally, let's go ahead and do an apt install of Timurin 17 JDK. So we'll paste that in. It gives us the option, do we want to go ahead and do the installation? And the answer is yes. Now that it's complete, let's go and make sure it's installed correctly. So we'll type java-version. And we can see here that we have version 17.0.7 .7 installed, which is what we expected. Now we're ready to go ahead and install Jenkins. So we'll go over to Jenkins.io, click on the download link. Under the stable side on download, let's scroll down to Ubuntu and Debian. And much like we did for installing Temurin, we're going to need to set up a key, set up a repository. We'll do our update. We'll ignore installing Java because we've already installed Java. And then we'll go ahead and install Jenkins. So let's go ahead and start with our key, paste this in. We'll get the information for the repository, paste that in. We'll go ahead and do our apt update. Much like what we saw for our Timurin installation, we now have a packages.jenkins.io entry. And then finally, let's go ahead and say apt install Jenkins. And that will install the most recent version of Jenkins onto this machine. So let's hit enter. It's giving us the option, do you want to go ahead and install? And we'll say yes. Now that it's complete, let's go ahead and see if it's running. So we'll type PS, AUX, WW, and we'll grep for Java. And what we'll see here is we do have the Jenkins process running with all of its parameters. But let's look at this a little bit differently. We'll clear this out. Let's type systemctl dash dash full status and then Jenkins. What we can see here is we've got a loaded line with what the service is. We have our line that's active. And we can also see under C group here, our user bin Java, our dash D of java.awt.headless equals true. And then also more information on running the war file, a web root parameter, and also an HTTP port parameter. This line that's right here in the middle is what we saw when we ran PS aux. But let's say for a moment that I want to go ahead and change some of these startup parameters. Let's say I'm going to keep headless true, but I want to add a few more items in. Let's go ahead and quit out of this. Before we can make changes to the startup parameters, we need to stop the process. So we'll say system CTL stop Jenkins. And then next up, what we're going to do is we're going to say system CTL edit Jenkins. Now we'll see here that we are editing the Etsy systemd system Jenkins service D override comp file. Also note here that anything between here and the comment below, which are three or four lines below, anything that's in this block will become the contents of override.conf. Below this line, as it says, lines below this comment will be discarded. What we see below here are all the different values that already exist for the systemd process for Jenkins. So what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to add in a couple of extra environment variables into the services block. If we were to look here at the very top, we have a unit block, we have a services block, and at the bottom, we actually have an install block. The only place that we're wanting to make changes 
will be to the system block, but we're not going to make them here in the bottom. We're going to put them up in the top where it said anything between here and the other comment is what will be rendered. So let's go ahead and paste in the information that I want. What I have here is I have the service block and two environment variables. One environment variable is Java ops. You already see that we're keeping the Java AWT headless equals to true, and we're adding in a few more dash Ds. We're adding in a prefer IPv4 stack. We're adding in our own tempter, and then a couple of time zone entries. Also, we're adding in Jenkins ops, where we're going to be specifying a plugin route. Now, plugin route, if you've not worked with it before, is where the extracted plugins live on your file system. Anytime I'm setting up a new Jenkins controller, I want my Jenkins home directory to stay as clean as possible. One of those things to help keep it clean is inside of the Jenkins home plugins directory is all the plugins. I'm fine having the plugins defined there, but I don't want those plugins when they're extracted to also live there. I want the extractions to live somewhere else. And that's what plugin root does for you. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, since we specified a tempter value, that's not something that Jenkins can create for us, so we need to manually create that ourselves. The location for that is var cache Jenkins temp, or at least that's where I decided to put it. And then since I'm currently root, I need to change the ownership of this directory because it's going to run as Jenkins user inside of a Jenkins group. So I'm changing the ownership of this directory to Jenkins Jenkins. Now, before we start it back up, let's take a look at our status one more time. So we'll say system CTL dash dash full status Jenkins. Now, much like before, we still see our loaded and we see active, but right here in the middle is the drop-in. And this is the override conf that we just created by using systemctl edit. Before we start it up, I want to show you two more things. Number one, I want to show you systemctl show Jenkins. And these are all the different parameters that systemd is using to control the Jenkins service. If we look for environment, we're going to see one entry here and we see all of our different environment variables that are used. We see our Jenkins home environment variable. We see Jenkins web root. If we scroll right, we'll see our Java ops that we just created. If we keep going a little bit further, we'll also see our Jenkins ops that we created. So this one line contains all of the environment variables. Let's quit out of that. Now, when we did our system edit of our Jenkins service, we're fairly confident that we know it's going to run OK but we can know for sure that it's okay by running systemd analyze verify and then jenkins.service. Since we did not receive any kind of response back, we're very confident that the service is going to run fine. We can also validate this by checking the status and we can see the status was zero. So if for some reason it doesn't start, it's not systemd's fault, it's something else. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our service. So we'll say systemctl start Jenkins. Now that it's completed, let's take a look at our status. So we'll say systemctl dash dash full status Jenkins. Now we can see we have our loaded and active and active is running. We still see our override conf. And then if we were to take a look under C group, if we were to scroll right, we're going to see the extra parameters that we added into the override conf via using systemctl edit. So all the values that we added are there. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of systemctl status, we see a little snippet of the log. What do I need to do if I want to see the full log? Well, let's quit out of this. And the command that we need to run, we're going to type journal ctl u Jenkins. And I'm also going to add in a dash f so we can follow any changes that are happening within that log. So it's going to show us the last handful of lines. But as things start happening within the Jenkins controller, the log file will follow the changes that are happening. Let's go over into our browser. And let's go to the controller. We know it's started. So if we take a look at Jenkins 8080, now we're ready to unlock Jenkins. Well, I could go and cat out the contents of this file. But if you remember, by taking a look at the log, this password shows up in the log. So I'm going to copy it from here. I'm going to paste it into administrator password and click on continue. Now I'm at the point to where I want to install suggested plugins. Now that the plugins are installed, we can create our first admin user. Next, we'll verify that our Jenkins URL is correct. Let's click on Save and Finish. And then finally, we can click on Start Using Jenkins. And this will drop us into our controller where we can finish setting up our agents, start defining our jobs, and start using our new Jenkins controller on Debian 12. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter 
at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.